on your screen. Near the end of the workshop, we will open up the floor to a little Q&A from our panel. And we will also have a handout for this event on our, on our members only Facebook page and also in the chat. And Wanda, if you can, can you explain the kind of the visuals so from gallery view to speaker view? Wanda? I can, but maybe I'll just ask everybody, so thumbs up if you don't know how to control your gallery speaker view when screens are being shared, because I don't want to bore everybody. Is there anybody that needs to know how that works? Well, I'm on the, I'm on my iPhone and nothing else shows. So I'm just going to try to work from this. Okay. So the way it works is if I can get this really close enough up in the top right hand corner, you're going to see if you're seeing a gallery of speakers right now, then what you're going to see is either enter full screen or exit full screen on the top right. Most likely every device is a little different. And then you're going to see speaker view. If you're in gallery view, if you're in gallery view, if you're in speaker view, you're going to see gallery of view up there. So I would suggest that right now, I know screens are being shared. You probably want to be in gallery view. So if you're only seeing one speaker, you probably need to click on the gallery view. Once you are, if, if when you're sharing screens, I don't recommend gallery view. And then you're going to see, let me bring that picture up. You're going to see these little options up here. And so there's a like a lot of squares and then three lines and then a solid big line and then a little line. And each one of those means something. So if you do the, the lots of dots, you're gonna see some gallery over on one side of your screen and then the um, shared screen. And it's gonna look something like this. This happens to be a speaker, but that's how it would look if you had a um, screen up. I just don't have a shot of that. This is of course what the gallery looks like. So if you're a gallery like that with no shared screen, if you click the little dots when you're in speaker view, you get just some speakers on the, usually on the right side of the screen, depending on how, how you last use it. If you use the thick line, you're gonna see less people. You're gonna see, or most likely you're gonna see something like that where that's the shared screen and you've got a speaker up here. If you go with the single line, all you see is a single little line that says so-and-so speaking. In all of those situations, you can, if you're on a touchpad, you can touch it and move it, or you can use your mouse and move it anywhere on the screen so you can see the shared screen better. So you kind of have control over what you're seeing as uh, during the crawl. If you're having any questions, just use the chat and I'll, I'll try to help you get it there. Uh, if you just like the idea that you're seeing the speaker bigger than everyone else, then I suggest you go into speaker mode and then try the gallery mode, which will then start highlighting the speakers bigger than the other videos if you want to see them. Okay. Hope that helps. That's, did everybody understand? That sounds really good. Everybody good? Well, yeah. All righty. Well, let me just go ahead and we're going to be starting with our panel for this online discussion will be Kim Carr, Serena Bashir, and Lorena McFarland. Would each of you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and your business? I would, whichever young lady would like to start, you guys could go for that. Want me to start? <clears throat> Hi everybody, good morning. It's nice to see you. A special hello to my previous classmates, Pat and Chris. I miss you guys. Um, so I am a primarily a pastel artist. I do work in other mediums, but I'm not that confident yet to do a lot of oils. Um, but I have been printing cards and prints of my work for a lot of years. And um, I use primarily Vistaprint. And also of late, the last couple of years, I've been using Finerworks. Finerworks.com and Vistaprint.com. Um, 
I started using Finer Works. That's where I go for my prints. I started using them for my cards recently because they make a larger card than Vistaprint. Um, they, I think that the most important thing, especially for a 2D artist, um, well, a photographer is already there, but a painter has to have, has to begin with a very good photograph of their work. Now, I have the advantage of knowing about photography and can um, photograph my own work. Um, so that saves me some money. If you, if you can't get good photos of your work to upload to these services to have your work printed, then I advise you to find someone who is a professional and knows about photography and can <clears throat> produce good photos for you to upload in the format that these uh, companies want. Um, my only limitation has been that my software, I use Photoshop Express, no, um, Photoshop Elements software. I'm just too cheap to buy the Photoshop Lightroom or the actual Photoshop. So my limitation is that I cannot produce a, a, a JPEG in uh, well, actually, you can't get it in JPEG, but I can't produce a TIFF or a format, a photo format that is in CMYK color mode, which is what you really want. Well, that's what they say. Everybody says you need to have CMYK color mode of your photograph to get a good print or um, card. Now, I have not been using the same YK for years and have only become aware of that limitation recently. So um, I use JPEGs and I use RGB color mode and so far I've had quite a bit of luck with that. There have been a few times that my prints have come back or my cards have come back and they've been too dark. And so I've learned to compensate for that. Um, so that's the main thing. You have to start with a really good photo. Then if you use Vistaprint or Finerworks, those are menu-driven sites that are quite user-friendly. And once you start using them, you can actually save your inventory and save your um, files so that when you go in to order, sometimes you can just press reorder and um, go from there. So uh, that saves a lot of time. Now, uh, that's probably enough for, for now, I guess, and uh, later on in the, in the Zoom, if you want me to go to one of these sites, I can show you the screen and kind of walk you through what I do when I order something. I guess, is that good? <laughs> can we move <laughs> on to the next person, or shall I get found? <laughs> I can go ahead and introduce myself if... That works. That's, Can you yes, hear me? Okay. Thank you. I'm Serena Boschert. Um, I've been doing my ceramic work for over 40 years. I was a charter member of Missouri Artisans Business Development Association, which then ended and started Best of Missouri Hands. I was the first president of that group. Um, I've done the show circuit for 26 years. I now sell just at a gallery here in St. Charles. My media is hand-painted ceramic ornaments. And over the years, I have uh, specialized in hand-painted Christmas ornaments of people's homes and pets. And that has opened up a nationwide business for me. I'm trying to slow down just a little bit after so long. But I love doing my work. I will never quit. I started doing the cards because I have a very large family. And I love sending personal mail. As I was doing these, I started going ahead and producing more. Um, to sell at the gallery or any shows I do. Mine are one of a kind. I buy Michael's blank cards and envelopes when they're on sale. So it comes down to about 10 cents for an envelope and uh, the greeting card. I have used Vistaprint. This is one of them. It was a large painting that I had done smaller um, of St. Charles Riverfront 
Otherwise, this was another painting. Otherwise, all of my work, even reproducing my own artwork, I do on my own computer. It is literally one of a kind. I don't have mass production. Vista print was the only one I used for that. I put them in the self-seal envelopes and we'll probably get into the prices later, but I sell mainly through the gallery. I send hundreds of cards a year. So it's a, kind of a sideline to my ceramics, not necessarily like Kim, a true money maker. So I'll let Kim go ahead and take over from here. Okay, Kim? can you guys hear me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, hi. Uh, I'm Kim Carr and I'm a, a photographer and mainly I do uh, farm animals, but rural stuff and everything. But when I first started as an artist, it was with note cards. Um, I didn't know anything about art and stuff like that. And I figured that was probably the cheapest way for me to kind of put my images out there and see what people thought. So I started with a blank note card. I have tried uh, numerous printers and stuff like that. I don't print at home. I use a uh, Golner printing, which you guys are going to get the address and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I tried several different printers. They're the ones I like the best. Um, just because of the volume of cards that I do. I Last year, I, I did just over $10,000 in note cards. So it's a, it's a nice little chunk of change for me. It is not my main um, uh, source of sales and stuff like that. But I think between the three of us here, we all have uh, different um, views and ways we do things and stuff like that. So I think we've got some questions today that'll help kind of um, answer, you know, things for you guys. And we'll always, you know, be happy to answer questions afterwards and stuff too. So, um, so yeah, no cards is a, is a good portion of my sales, but, uh, um, you know, they, like I said, they can make a nice little chunk of change for you if, if you want to kind of subsidize with your other art and stuff. So I'll uh, let Wanda start with some questions for us. All right, let's start off with, I know some of you have already covered it, but uh, is there anything else in the context of, in general, describe your greeting cards, print on demand products and its function within your business? I know you've all talked a little bit, but is there anything more you want to add in just that? general description of your business with greeting cards? Uh, I, I didn't say that um, I, I generally sell my, my cards through the galleries, not so much right now. Um, and um, I use a lot of them actually. I'm, I am a, a plein air artist and I travel a lot to plein air competitions. So I use a lot of them as gifts for people who feed me, house me, um, that sort of thing, which is a really nice way to say thank you. Um, the nice, as Kim mentioned, she she makes quite a bit of dough on her on her cards, and um, it's true that if you if you um, if you order more cards you get them for less the bigger your order the less they are per card so your markup um, really um, becomes more of a profit and that's what I really like about the cards you, you get you get quite a bit of a profit margin on them uh, also I want to say that um, Christmas time is is a great time for, for cards. One of my best sellers is this one right here. This is actually one of my best selling prints. Also, I make two versions of this card. It says, I, I guess this is backwards, you guys, it's backwards to me, but it says Peace on Earth, which is pretty generic. And I do make a version that has a, a generic greeting on the inside. But I also make a version that's blank because people don't necessarily, you never know if they want to say Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah. So I make two versions of the card. This is one of my best sellers. Um, for the card that has the, the um, verse on the inside, 
I make a little um, cheat sheet that goes in the back of the package back here where my information is. This goes into the back of the package so that people know what the inside of the card says without having to remove it from the package in the store. Um, packaging. Um, I have found that the little plastic packages that I order from clearbags.com, the ones that have the gum on the flaps are really a pain in the butt. So I stopped using those when I saw that Kim uses just a, it's an open uh, plastic uh, bag and it's just, you just flip it in and there's no flap. You can still use those, Kim? I think that's a smart, a smart way to go. And they're less expensive too without the adhesive. That's all I have for, for right now. <laughs> I'm open to questions. Serena, mm -hmm. what do you do? What else would you like to add? Well, again, I, I do mine one of a kind. I have two examples here. These were black and white drawings I did of St. Charles buildings. And I actually print them on my HP computer, cut them out and paste them on. Again, this isn't a uh, volume and I'm kind of, People like my whimsical work. This I do a lot of collage work. This is one play fair with a collage bingo cards I found at a garage sale. Um, this one I cut out old um, dictionaries and then at, the swan is the definition and then I painted a swan in it. A lot of them are one of a kind. I just do quick paintings. I'm a fast worker so it doesn't take me long. I use this one for a lot of my great nieces and nephews, wedding showers, baby showers, graduations. I have over 100 nieces and nephews, so I use a lot of my own cards. Um, photographs, wherever I travel, these are flowers from my garden. And then I add um, butterfly that I get from various locations. I, too, use the clear bags. Um, I use the adhesive. <laughs> I don't mind those. I leave them blank inside. People can use them for any occasion they want to. Um, prices range from $3 up to 8 depending on how much work I put into the card. And again, I mainly sell them at the gallery. I sign, since it's each one's kind of original except for the prints, I um, sign my name on the front. I don't have any, the contact information is through the gallery. Um, I call them frameable art cards because so many people buy them just to frame. Um, let's see, I think, yeah, I, like I said, I use the clear bags, adhesive. And again, it's kind of a whimsical work for me. If I get tired of a design, I move on. I don't, I don't do that many quality. I do have a St. Louis um, Riverfront design I use and the St. Charles. Those are mainly for the gallery to sell for tourists coming in. Otherwise, it's strictly a whimsical kind of sideline for me. So I think that's it for me. But again, they're, they're one of a kind gluing, probably like Kim started out. So I'll let her go on to mm -hmm. her process. Serena, before we go on to Kim, sure. can you be more specific on the kind of adhesive you're using? Um, I use the matte media use that on the cards and probably try to get a, an assembly line going of different designs, but just the map media on the cards glue. This one has, this is in the folder already or in the envelope. Um, it's a photo I took. I did put it on black background paper, glued the photo and then had a butterfly design that I used and glued the butterfly on it, but it works real well got to be careful you don't let it squirt out but when you're doing assembly line you always got wet rags and everything there with you <laughs> if I mess up I kind of redesign it and one of my nieces and nephews get that one <laughs> I don't I make sure they're very nice to sell <laughs> I did see um one other question too from Marianne what kind of adhesive do you guys use 
to put their actual artwork, the pieces, onto the card itself. Okay, mine is the matte medium. Matte medium. Sometimes I use the gel, otherwise I can use the liquid. Tim, Kim, you want to add some more to this before we go on to the next question? Yes, uh, as far as like uh, um, where I sell my cards, I do have my cards in a couple galleries and then I also have them online. But by far, my largest uh, amount of sales is at art shows. And I have two lines of cards. I have, uh, um, you know, the, the blank the blank note cards, and then I have the handmade reading cards that I started a few years ago, and I'm discontinuing the blank cards. I did have like uh, over 300 different designs, and I did real well with them. I do put them in the uh, clear bag with the adhesive strip uh, to keep them protected and stuff, and on the uh, handmade cards, um, I've gone to a jacket which uh, um, I get both of those at clearbags.com, but it allows the customer then to open the card uh, and see inside because some of them are greeted, but mine also have images on the inside. So that way it, the card stays protected, um, you know, from fingerprints and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, the majority of my cards I sell are at our shows because it really helps when, I think, when you can engage with the person and stuff. But like Lorraine and uh, Serena said, you know, no matter where you sell them, if you put them in some kind of protective sleeve, because at a gallery, they're going to be getting handled a lot and stuff like that. I would highly recommend it because your cards are going to hold up and, and be able to, you know, stand the life of time to, till they get sold. So that's really all I have to say on that. Okay, let's move on. Um, maybe Kim, you could type in where people can get the matte medium because there's a lot of questions on what that really is. If somebody can tell us what website. Or I, I will is. have, I will, I will. Okay, I will have Serena type that in or chat or, or she'll get that to us. Or do you have a website, Serena, that you get your matte medium from? Because I don't use, I just use uh, Elmer's glue on my handmade cards. Uh, let's unmute you, Serena. You're muted. Okay. Um, since I do so few cards, I get it at Michael's when it's and use a 50% off coupon. <laughs> Same thing for my cards. I don't buy them until I have a 50% off coupon. And it works for me in the smaller manner. Mm -hmm. okay, let's move on to some of the other questions. What makes a good print company price point, customer service, speed of delivery, offering different sizes, does more than print cards. So in general, what do you think makes a good print card? And why don't we start with Serena this time? Again, I've only used Vista Print for that one St. Charles um, note card. Otherwise it's self. So I really, Vista Print is the only one I've ever used. I think if I did do it in volume, I would go to Goner printing. I've had prints done there before and they do an excellent job. How about Kim? What do you what do you want to add to that? Um, I I tried several different printers. I don't print at home because of the volume of cards that I print. Um, so I tried several different printers. Golners on that Serena said on in St. Charles, they are a family run business. They know me by name. They will work with you. The thing that I like is I have a friend that does cards. And for every design that she has, her company requires that she does a 200 or 250 minimum. Wow. Well, I've got some cards I've sold 10 of. I mean, that just were for flops. And if I had 200 of them sitting in my hand, I'd be mad. So I like Goldner's. I can print 10 10 cards of this one, I can print 200 of this other one, and uh, they just, they're, they're just an exceptional company to work with. So for those of you that don't live close to them, what I do is I send my uh, PDF file, once I've created my card, I save it as a PDF, I send that to them, and they will keep it on hand. And so I can, I can contact them and say, I need this, 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 and this, and they will print my order if I have changes on a card, if I redesigned it or something like that, they'll delete the file they have and I just send them the new one. 
um, when they're ready, I go down there and pick them up. But for someone who lives farther away, they can ship your cards to you. So it's all just a matter of finding a company that you like. And the biggest thing with artists is finding a company that has colors true to your work. Because I've had uh, another printer print some of my work and the color was so off that, I mean, I, I give them to my nephew, my great nephew and other kids to color on because I can't, they're just so ugly to me because the color's not right. So make sure you work with a company that is dedicated to making sure your colors are as they should be. I have something to add to that. If, if you're using an online service like Vistaprint or Finer Works, um, what I usually, I live in a rural area. I'm far away from St. Louis. I'm 200 miles or two hours from everywhere. So I tried my local printer and it was just awful. It was not a good experience. So I'm pretty much stuck to online ordering. And what I do is if I have any doubts about how something's going to look, I'll order a small order and Vistaprint um, and I think Finer Works also, they, they don't have a minimum order. So, um, and you don't have to pay for a proof or, um, uh, you know, when you go to, um, uh, to get a print at a, at a printer, sometimes you have to pay a lot of money up front for the um, original plate or uh, I, I don't know, I, I don't know much about it, but it's, it's a lot of money. So when you use these online services and you just upload your, your photo and you've got a good photo, um, you save quite a bit of money. So I, I usually, if I have any doubts about how it's going to look, I'll order a small number of cards. And when they come, if I like them, great. If not, I'll adjust my print or I'll just abandon that particular card and, and um, not use it. Um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Vistaprint does these um, smaller cards, the four by four or four by five by, I don't know what these are for, they're small. <laughs> and they sell really well and you can get, you That's know. Go ahead, Kim. Or who was that, that's an A2. And the size is called an A2. A2. Thank you. Um, so, and, and by the way, uh, these are these are cards that I make from my um, commissions, my pet pet portrait commissions, and surprisingly enough, they they do sell to you know people who have Australian shepherds will buy this card. So I I started printing more of those. Now this is one that I had printed at finerworks.com. It's a larger card, um, five by seven. And um, it, you know, um, bigger margin of profit on, on those. Uh, I kind of forgot what my point was gonna be. Um, hmm. <laughs> uh, sorry, can't remember what I, what I was, leading up to. It'll come to me. And you just let us know when it does. <laughs> Before I go on to the next question, Allison, is there any in the chat that we haven't covered? Allison is muted. Yeah, I'm trying to unmute her, but I'm not having any success. I think we're stepping on it. All right, good. Um, I know there are a couple that are coming up in this area. The one thing I was curious about, and I thought I'd kind of throw those out, when you're actually setting up your artwork, are you what applications are you setting your artwork up in? So then you can give it to the printer. And also what the print what is the printer actually asking? as files, how to save your images, how to set up your images, so then they can work with your work. Just curious. I'll let Lorraine and Kim answer those. That doesn't apply to me. Well, if you use Vistaprint or Finer Works, as I said, as I mentioned earlier, those are very user-friendly sites. And they also have, um, 
especially finer works, has a lot of articles you can read about how to format your photos, how to photograph your work, um, what kind of format you need to upload to get a good result. And um, it, as I, you know, it, when I'm ready to um, upload an image, I just make sure that I follow all the guidelines that they have um, recommended through these articles. And it, uh, they also have chat. I mean, when you go to Vistaprint, um, and uh, at, at some point, if we can go to that screen, I could just walk you through how I order a card. When you go there, there's a chat window open as soon as you start your order, and you can ask questions. Yesterday, I went to um, play around with it so I would be well prepared for today, and I found um, that they actually had a glitch in their um, in their order process, and I. I uh, was able to talk to a guy on the chat and say, hey, you know, I don't understand, I'm confused. And he said, oh, well, I'll talk to management about that and they were gonna get that fixed. So they're very responsive and they're right there for you. And Finer Works also is very responsive. I've even called Finer Works or had them call me back and been on the phone for hours with them trying to fix, fix problems. Only once, that was for a print, uh, a, a special um, situation where I was making large prints for a hospital in installation. But, um, you know, they, the websites, if you, if you go the online, um, if you use the online websites, it, as I said, they're very user friendly and you can get a lot of support to help you format your, your work. Now, before I go to the website, I take photos with my SLR, my good camera, uh, and um, I upload those photos into Photoshop Elements, and then I uh, crop and adjust the lighting if I need to, and um, I make it, I, I resize them so that they're the correct size for whatever website I'm using. Um, you can do all of that in Photoshop Elements if you have it. As I said, I do all of that myself. Now, if you don't have that that option, then you, you, you will have to find someone to do that for you, and that's an extra expense, unfortunately. Does that answer the question? Yep. And, and Kim, what, what do you, some of your process? Okay. Well, for, for me, I design my cards in a program. It's called Serif Page Plus. I think it's an obsolete program now, but there's all kinds of programs out there where you can do your card design if you're wanting to design them yourself. And so in the handout that you're going to get from me, I go into that in a lot more detail. But I just, I said, I uh, created a template because on an eight and a half my 11 sheet of paper, regular sheet of paper, I design, on my blank cards, I design two cards at a time. So this is a card I designed for a friend of mine that has all packed those. And so you can see I just laid off the images and, and then this is on card stock and so they're blank inside. And then all they gotta do is they just print their sheet and then I have Goldner's cut it for me. And I used to cut myself that I would get, you know, tons of these I cut myself and then I would score them so I can fold them but now, because I do so many cards at a time, I have goalers cut and score for me. It's just cheaper. And then someone asked about information on the back. And so, to me, I mean, this, you know, this is the sheet of paper cut in half. This is free real estate space. There was an artist I met one time, and this was blank back here. And to me, don't ever leave the back of your card blank. Because this is, this is where you put, you know, I've got my website down here. I've got my logo, Sophia the Donkey. I've got Best Missouri Hands because I'm a jury member. Anybody who's a jury member can use the, the logo on any of your artwork and stuff. And then I got a little bio. I've got a title. So someone buys this card and they send it to somebody. That person likes this image. They want to see more of my work. They can go right there to my website. So don't. Don't ever leave the back of your cards blank. Put some kind of a, even if you just search from this. 
you know, and it's, it has your website, get those and add those to the back of your cards, you know, so, or if you're designing them in Vistaprint, like Lorraine said, um, you know, you put your image on the front and then they've got a backside, utilize that, put, put some information there, so. That's excellent, wow. Yeah, I saw, I saw the question that was uh, asked about, do you type in your information on the back of the card or do you have an image that you upload? Um, I have a logo image that is in my file in Vistaprint and Finer Works, and I will use that on the back of the card. Um, the ones I showed you earlier don't have it because I didn't start doing that till recently. And, and to be honest with you, I'm not happy with my logo. I'd like to redesign it. Um, and uh, yeah, you, can I share my screen and show everybody how I just go through the process of ordering a card? Would that be helpful? Does everybody want uh, to see that? Show of, hand, show of hands, how many people want to see the Vistaprint process? Fine, doesn't matter. Only one. Chris, I'll, I'll get with you later. You two ladies can stay on at the end, or I can set up a special Zoom meeting just for you guys, and you can do okay. walk her through. I've actually seen a couple other hands, so maybe okay. we answer a few more questions, and then we'll keep the meeting going for those who want to see the Vistaprint process can stay on, and then it's there in the recording, yeah. too. Uh, there's been one thing that hasn't been talked about at all is keeping track of your inventory of cards and which cards do well, which ones don't. Um, so I think that's probably an important thing, just like the inventory of our art. So uh, Lorraine, do you want to share how you do that? Sure. Um, like I said, I, I mostly sell my cards through, through the galleries, and then the, the rest of them are usually given away as thank yous, or I send them to my, I, yeah, to thank yous. I send them to people who buy my original work and uh, but in the galleries, each gallery has an inventory system, and um, I try to uh, use their system when I can to assign a number or letter or description to each image. And, um, and with some galleries, it's, it's easier than others. Um, I do use uh, I have started using uh, Artwork Archive, which is a software that you can subscribe to online, which I absolutely love because before I started using Artwork Archive, I never knew where any of my stuff was, even my originals. They'd be out in galleries or hanging in a show and I'd have no idea, you know, well, where is this original and where is that original? Well, Artwork Archive is a wonderful software. It's really not very expensive. You can subscribe at different levels. Now, I haven't used it extensively for my cards, but I'm going to start doing that. And um, it's, it's a very user-friendly software that um, can at least tell you where your stuff is. And then um, when uh, I do sell in the galleries, um, when they send me my monthly check and statement, if they're not, um, if they're not indicating on the statement, mm -hmm. the inventory number or the description of what I've sold, I just call them up and I ask them and um, keep track that way. And that is very helpful to know which images are the most, then you know you want to order more of that image and get more of those out there. The other thing I haven't mentioned is, this is a really wonderful way for 2D artists to get their work out there, especially to people who can't necessarily afford to buy an original or a print. You know, you, you, it kind of makes you top of mind if you happen to give them a gift or, or they buy a card in your, in your uh, gallery. It, it reminds them about your work and maybe in the future when they do have the money for a, for a print, a framed print or, a, or an original, they might contact you for that or seek you out for that. Thank you, Lorraine. Kim, do you have anything to add to the inventory process? Yeah. 
Um, for me, because uh, right now at home, I probably have a little over 3,000 cards on hand, oh. which I'm low in stock. Um, but for me, I use Excel. I, I have a lot of loopholes because like I have an Excel sheet for each gallery and then for all the titles I have and all that kind of stuff. So I need to tighten mine up. Um, but I do use Excel to keep track of my inventory. And at home um, with my cards, I, I have them in boxes on sh in shelves and then I have them separated by, you know, birthdays, get well, sympathy, you know, so like that. So if I'm going in there to pull a card, you know, pull cards for an order or something, I usually know where to find them or if my mom's restocking or something like that. We can easily find the cards, so that's that just makes it easier for us and stuff. So, but keep an inventory when you have a lot of cards, it's not easy. Serena, well, again, I sell my cards only through Freemasons Gallery here in St. Charles, and it's uh, casual. I don't really need to keep an inventory because mine varies so much. The St. Charles ones or St. Louis, kind of the touristy cards, um, just keep track that if there's more needed down there. I probably have 100 cards ready made, and I may go down there. I either display them on a card rack down there or in a ceramic box I've made that people can go through, um, and I change them out. I'll just go down and take a new group down of various ones and everything. So really no formal inventory. Allison, I think there's a question to read. Yeah, um, actually, I, I'll have two. Um, the one that was coming from Chris, which was kind of in an area I was thinking of too. Um, Chris says, I have family who request for a variety pack of my cards. How do you determine how to make a good card a subject? Good card. <laughs> Well, I think she's asking what would make good cards like a, a good, for a good subject, pack. especially for the variety packs. Well, I can answer that. I I um I just go by reaction to my work. Um, you know, I I I'm not as active as I should be on Instagram and Facebook. I'm trying to be better about that, but. Um, you can actually go back through your uh, Facebook posts and see when you posted an, an image, you can see how many likes you got. Um, uh, sometimes it just, it's just my, my gut instinct, what I think is really good work and what I think will, um, will appeal to folks. I almost always make cards from, um, my award winners, for instance, last year at Steelville, I won the quick paint and um, that image was extremely popular when I, when I printed it as a card. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm um, basically taking the advice of professional judges there. I, my work gets judged a lot because I do a lot of plein air competitions. So, um, uh, you know, I have those uh, evaluations of, by professional judges to go by. Um, then, of course, you know, uh, I, I pay attention to the ones that just sell the most. And I haven't put together um, packages uh, just because um, I, I just haven't done that. I haven't made... Um, uh, packages of six or packages of ten. I've thought about it, but um, this is the approach I would take if I was going to do it. And um, and it's a great idea. Uh, I know artists out there who do it a lot, and they, you know, you get an even better profit margin if you if you put six cards that um, people, someone who likes your work wants to take six cards home in a package and get a little bit of a discount instead of buying, you know, you, instead of buying six cards at $3 a piece, uh, $18, you could sell six cards in a package for um, $16. And um, I just basically try to go either with my gut or with, uh, I, I, I will print my award winners uh, 
I just take, I would, I would say, take, take the ones that sell the most and people like the most. <laughs> and uh, I, that seems kind of elementary, but um, sorry, Chris, I, I don't know if that answered your question well or not. Kim, do you have anything to add to that? Um, when I first started out, my mistake was, is that I was like, oh, I'm going to sell all these cards and I printed a bunch of each of my designs. Well, some of them sold like crazy and others, eh, you know, so what I would recommend if you're going to start with cards, start with a low number, just print 10 of each design. And like Lorraine said, pick ones that you know have been, you know, you know, people have shown an interest in that image or something like that. And you'll get a feel for what people like and stuff. And now I feel pretty good. Uh, I think people like things that they can relate to, that are pretty, that are funny, uh, makes them feel good, evokes some kind of emotion. And so if you're wanting to put together a pack, like say you're doing a pack of, I don't know what you paint, um, you know, but say you're doing a pack of, of flowers, you know, like, like I, you know, like, I could do a pack of dogs. I could do a pack of cats. I could do a pack of flowers and stuff. So try to make it things that are related. Like Lorraine said, I, I, she said that her Christmas cards, one of her best sellers for Christmas, I do make a Christmas pack and they, I sell out every year, you know, I, I, however many packs I put together, but you can get my boxes on clearbags.com too. And this is a, a pack of horses that I did for a rescue group out in California to help uh, raise money for the rescue group. And so, so it's an assorted pack, like Lorraine had said before, you know, I put the different images on the back so that people will know what's in that pack. So I think that folks like say the, like the jewelry artist, fiber artist, ceramic artist on here and stuff like that, um, box sets might be kind of the way to go initially. But like Lorraine said, um, like if I sell my blank cards individually, they're two fifty each. Or if I sell them in a in a pack and a show, they're twelve for twenty four. But I let people pick out those twelve cards. On my handmade cards, I sell them for five fifty each, or six for thirty, and people can pick out their own packs. But if if you're someone who's not into cards like I am, but you want to have some cards. Having some box sets, and they could be all the same image inside, or they could be an assortment like that. that you know, someone could pick up a box set, and you know, that might be a good way to kind of start out too. But, but kind of test the waters, you know. Uh, I, I'd, like to add, I'd like to add that, um, yeah, as Chris, Kim Kim mentioned this, and I think it's you you should. If you're going to put packages together, they should all be of the same genre. I mean, I'm not going to put my pet portrait card in a package with my landscape cards. And if I've got florals, there, you know, there's going to be a package of florals, a package of landscape, and a package of pets. Sorry, Serena, your turn. That's, uh, that's okay. I don't package them for the store. Um, as gifts, I have, and I might take... Um, maybe six to ten hand-painted floral type themes and package them as a little gift tied up with a ribbon but I don't package them for sale down there they're too varied and uh, I know I have several customers that might come down by eight or ten at a time just so they have them in stock but they're not packaged they pick them out individually uh, and also in my in my galleries that take a lot of my cards like Columbia Art League um, I have arranged with them so that if somebody wants to buy, say, three cards, then they get a discount. You know, three three dollar card. If they buy three of them, they get them for eight dollars instead of nine dollars. Uh, there's two questions I'm going to combine so that each of you can answer. One is any tips you have on determining price. And any tips you want to give anyone who's just starting out, you know, what's the best thing to focus on if you're just starting to think about cards? And Serena, you want to go first? Yeah, I think first make sure they're professional. Make sure there's no glue or anything showing uh, the packaging, the envelope, the clear plastic envelope. The simpler ones, I start out at $3. I do some very elaborate um, collage type cards. And again, 
this uh, this is the only example I have. It's the bingo card I had from garage sales, but I actually glue buttons on this one. Um, I've used some of the thin ceramic pieces I've made, so people have to be careful in mailing them. And I usually put a little note in there, or I'll even include a little bubble wrap to put over a piece so it won't break in the mailing. But I think you've got to kind of play around with your market. If it's a simple card that you've made or that can be printed for an inexpensive price, you can start lower. My elaborate ones have gone up to $8. I see them at galleries, especially in North Carolina, where people do a very simple design for, and they sell them for, or they're asking $10. I don't know if they sell or not, but you gotta kind of play with your market and see how it goes. Um, and depending on how much work and effort you put into it. Emma, how about you? Uh, I agree with uh, Serena. You got to kind of just play around with your price. I would also look at other cards. I'd go to a gallery or to an art show and look at other cards that are kind of similar to yours to see what they're being priced at. But the bottom, the bottom line is uh, you got to consider your cost. So like in my handmade card, um, I've got the cost for the sheet of paper of the card. I also have uh, images printed that I take and tear and put on there. I tie twine around them. Um, I put an insert a sheet of paper in there so that people can write on that if they want. Then I've got the envelope and um, the uh, sleeve. And so in the old days, the formula was you take your cost and you times it by two to get your wholesale price. And then you times it by two again to get your retail price. With cards, you have some room to, to, to play with that. On, on my large canvas, I, I would not be able to sell a canvas for four times what it costs me. Um, I'm just not that great of an artist yet. You know, maybe someday I'll get famous and people would pay what I, four times what I pay my cost into it. But with note cards, I, I make a nice profit on my note cards and that adds up. It adds, it adds up. So I agree with uh, Serena, kind of play around with it, kind of see what other people are pricing theirs at. On my handmade cards, I get told all the time I need to go up on my price. Um, and I, I will, I will at some point. I'm not going to this year. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I would just kind of play around it with it. And on tips, like I said before, uh, print a low number to begin with, kind of get a feel for how people think about them and stuff before you, you know, I've, I've got, you know, my card of Sophia the donkey, you know, I could, I could print a thousand of her, you know, and that be sold out in you know, a year or so. So, you know, but then I got other cards that even though I, and I consider them popular cards, uh, but I, you know, I sell, you know, 30 of them a year or something. So Lorraine. Uh, well, Kim, first of all, you are famous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> yep. And, and um, I, I, for me, it's simple. I do two sizes. This is the, the A2, and this is the 5 by 7 which I don't know what, what the letter and number for that is. That's an A6. Okay, I do the, the A2 and the A6. The A2 sells for $3, the A6 sells for 5 and I, what I try to do is order more. The more I order, the higher my, my profit is. Now I have to consider the cost of the card and envelope and my packaging and um, shipping and uh, what I do is I just calculate all of that out and like Kim, I double that and then I double that again, or kind of, you know, I double it for sure, and then I decide how, how much higher I'm going to go from that point. Um, but for me, it's easy, because I only have the two sizes, and they're all, it's, you know, I don't, I don't do any hand work, uh, uh, I don't do any custom cards, maybe I should, uh, but with pastels, I, it's difficult. I can't, I can't put a pastel on a, on a card, an original pastel on a card, unless I spray it with something and that kind of spoils the work. Yeah. I've played around with um, watercolor, but I, like I said, I'm not that talented in the other mediums yet. 
maybe someday. And there, there are ways that you could do that with pastels. And if I was doing that, I would be charging a lot more. But um, yeah, it's just, you know, make sure you're, you're making some money. And if you're ordering online, the more you order, the more money you're going to make because they cost you a lot less when you order more. Any last words as we've now hit 11 o'clock and we'll stay on for the Vistaprint demo, but Kim? I, I have one thing to add to what Lorraine said. Um, if you are selling uh, numbered and limited edition work, I would recommend that you don't do those on your note cards, okay? Because like for the, I do the St. Louis Art Fair and uh, I will tell you what, artists, will frown upon that and and it could disqualify you from getting to show in them so so on my note cards i do not use the images that i uh sell as prints and canvas and stuff is limited edition i i might have a, a picture of the same pig and maybe a little different pose or something that i'll use on my cards or something but uh, uh for painters um your work is original you know, with your jewelry, I don't think it would matter on jewelry and stuff like that. But if you're a photographer and you're selling limited edition work, I wouldn't do the same images on your, your cards. If it's open edition, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Uh, any last words before we go to the Vista demo? Okay, Lorraine, you should be able to share your screen. Okay, so I just click on share screen. Yep. Okay. And, and for those of you who don't want to Wanda, can you move on to that? There was one other question that I did see before that just, and this might be towards you, Lorraine, as well. Just on um, photographing these pastels. Oh. I can never get the correct color, and that was from Diane. I just didn't want her to be left out there. Well, um, Gosh, you know, I use uh, a, a good, well, actually, my camera is a dinosaur. My, my camera is a D100 DSLR, and um, it's a Nikon D100 DSLR, but I've been using it for years, and I know the camera, and I always photograph my pastels uh, on a bright day in the shade outside where there is no dappled light. Now, sometimes that's difficult, but I try to time it so that, you know, I, I have enough time after I finish a work and I have to get it out, you know, as a photograph for a card or a print. Um, sometimes I don't make it, but um, you can also set up in your studio. I used to photograph inside my studio because I had a big nine foot window behind where I worked, but I've moved my studio to a different space now and, and uh, I can't, I don't have that to my advantage. So I take, I, I put the piece on an easel, a tripod with a, with my, I use my plein air setup and I, I put the camera, um, I use a, either use a very high shutter speed or make sure that I'm getting a good shutter speed, a high shutter speed, or I put the camera on a tripod. I've kind of learned to, to photograph without putting the camera on a tripod, and I bracket. I take uh, three photographs um, at uh, 0.3 f-stops apart or first, and then I take three photographs at, point f, at 0.7 f-stops apart in my camera does this for me. This is an old fashioned DSLR. It's not my phone. It's not a point and shoot. Um, and uh, I take a lot of photographs. Sometimes I'll take 20, 30 photographs of the piece. Then I'll take that photograph into Photoshop Elements and I look at all of those. And I pick the one that I think is the sharpest and has the best representation of the work and I start I make a I, I save it as a TIFF a TIFF file because every time you edit 
something in a Photoshop or Photoshop Elements program, it degrades the image a little bit. So I, I save it as a TIFF file. I copy that TIFF file. I make that copy a JPEG when I save it because JPEG is what I usually need. But I, I make a copy of that original TIFF file and I save that TIFF file in, the, in case I need to go back to it. And I will then edit that file. Crop it, adjust the lighting, the color if I need to. And I usually have the original sitting in my office with me well lit so that I can compare on my screen what I'm getting. Um, it's, a, it's a process and it's taken me many years to, to learn it and I probably need to upgrade my camera. But um, the most important thing is take a photo in bright light without any dappled light on it or if you can light it well in the studio. Um, Gary McMichael in St. Louis teaches uh, a course on how to photograph your work, which if you ever can take his class, that's very helpful. Uh, or, you know, there's a lot of uh, videos and YouTube videos online of tutorials online that will help you to photograph your, your pastels. Actually, we have an advantage because there's no glare like oils have. Um, and so I've, I've had a lot of trouble photographing my oils, but I'm pretty used to it to photographing my pastels. Um, I know that's all pretty technical, but before I was an artist, I was kind of a, an amateur photographer. So I, I kind of grew up, you know, learning all that stuff about photography and that helps a lot. So hope that answered your question. Okay, at this point, we'll uh, let Rain share the screen for the okay. Vistaprint demo. Uh, appreciate everybody that needs to drop off at this time and those who want to stay on and hear about the Vistaprint process. Also remember to um, grab your uh, your handout from the chat and we'll also be having it on the Facebook members only page as well. Okay, and I will probably leave now, but um, I will send in my answers to the form too to pass on to people. So thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, Serena. Serena. Bye, Serena. Um, Wanda, do you know how I can make the uh, the photographs of, or the uh, videos of you guys on the right side of my screen go away now that I'm on the Vistaprint site? Yeah, pick pick the speaker view up at the top, and then you're going to see a bunch of different lines and dots, and pick the single line option. Okay. That is so cool. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm here in my account, and um, I have, under my account, I have order history, quick reorder, order status. My portfolio is where I have all of my images, my favorites, my images and logos, and, um, you know, they, they also do digital marketing and stuff like that for you, which I don't use. So we'll just we'll just walk through um, making a card. Um, I'm going to go to my portfolio. And these are cards that I have ordered in the past. start with, um, I'm going to go back and, and we'll just start with a new order. Sorry, my internet connection's not that fast with the Zoom thing going on, I guess. So we'll go back here to my account and go to my images and logos. And this is where all of the images that I have uploaded are. So let's make a card with this new painting of mine, Forest Light. This tells me 
<clears throat> excuse me. Um, when I uploaded it and the dimensions, that's good pixels, high pixels, and uh, I'm going to create product. Lots of stuff you can make. Um, they do lots of stuff, cards, mouse pads. I'm going to, I'm going to approach this from a different direction. Sorry. We're going to go to products because this would be where you would go if you were just starting out with, with Vista print. So go to invitations and stationery. Sorry, I don't know why that screen is going away. Invitations and stationery. And then we want to choose cards, note cards, right here, note cards. Okay, now we're rocking. So use your complete design. That's what you want to choose. This first one here, upload it. Slow. Okay. So here you get to choose your, your design and format. I'm going to choose a flat, I'm sorry, not a flat card. We want a folded card. Looking over here on folded. And I'm going to choose this horizontal folded design and click next. And this is where you probably are going to see a, a chat window pop up in case you need help. And they're usually pretty quick. Okay, so what you see here is your design space. And here you see the chat window. We're, we're not going to use chat, but you can. They're very good about that. And the first thing you're going to do is, is work on your front side. And this is the front side. It's highlighted here. We're going to upload a design. So we're going to add image. And I'm going to choose an image from previous uploads. You can choose an image from your computer if you like. Let's go back there so you can see that. Add image. You can choose an image from your computer and then you'll go through the process of uploading it. You can choose an image from your image library in the website. It looks like they can, you can now choose images from Facebook. I've, that's something new. I've not seen that before. Um, so I'm going to go to previous uploads and I'm going to choose my forest light. And there you go. Now, at this point, you want to make sure that your image, if you want it to go all the way out to the edge of the card, it needs to be outside this safety line. If you want a white border around your image, then you will crop it in so that it's inside this safety line. 
And to do that, you can right click on the image and it brings up these choices for things you can do with it. And you could crop it here, but I like mine to, uh, as a full bleed, that's what it's called when it goes all the way out to the edge of the card. So I'm done with that. That's, that's looking good. I like the way that looks. So we're going to move on to the next step, which is the inside. Now, they have a default here that has this um, box. I don't want that box. So I'm going to go down here, over here to the side. These are different things that you can have printed on the inside as borders or corners. I don't know why anybody would want something like that or like that. That's kind of ugly. But um, what you want to choose is this one here. And so it says here, upload your design. Well, I don't want to upload a design. I just want it to be blank. If you click on this um, drop down here, it tells you, you can do a full color on the inside if you want, and that's included in the price. You can do a grayscale image if you want, and that's included in the price. I just want a blank on the inside. So I'll choose blank and I'm done with the inside and I'll go next. Now we're to the back side. Again, it gives you this default box. I don't want the default box. So it gives me these choices for what I want on the back. And the easiest way to just print something on the back would be to choose, you could choose this one with the box. There's text with a box around it. Or here there's text with no box around it. I'm going to choose that. And you can click on this text and change the text to, you can change your, your uh, font. Let's change the font to um, Aperture Web. You can change the size of the font. You can change the color of the font. You can make it bold if you like. You can italicize it, underline it. It's pretty much like any word processing program if you use Word. Now, double click or right click. Well, come on. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Click up here on text. Add a text field. You want to. Over here is the text field. Sorry. They changed this on me. Okay, so here you're just going to change this. You don't want a note from. So you can either delete it or highlight it and type over. I'm going to put Forest, come on, click. The name of the image and my website. And then you can arrange all of this the way you want it by dragging. It gives you these guidelines for centering stuff. Now here, this is this font is too big, so I can either increase the size of my text box or I could have reduced the size of the font. Now, if I wanted to, 
add my logo, which I'm not crazy about. I would click image and image library and go grab my logo. Actually, it's in my previous uploads. There's my logo, click on that. Drag it over. And that's my backside. And you can rearrange, move things around, increase the size of things. And this is not how I would finalize it, but we'll, for the sake of time, we're going to go on. So say you're satisfied with your, your backside now. You've got a front side, an inside, and a backside. Next. Now this is where their glitch is. It looks like they haven't fixed the glitch. They say front side, back side. This should actually say inside. They haven't fixed that glitch. But so I've got my front side, my inside, and my back side. And say I'm satisfied with this. I'm going to say I have reviewed and approved my design. Click next. Now, here you choose your papers. I always use the mat because I think my, my pastels look good on the mat. You can choose your quantity. And now you'll see here, for a quantity of 10, your cards are going to be about $1.28 each. But say you order 50 of them. Uh, 50 goes into 59, 59, 60. Well, it's less. Each time you, you increase your quantity, your total cost goes down. So your cost per card becomes much less. If you're going to just check out how it looks, you want to order just a few, click 10, see how they look. And then over here, you can also, they've got this 3D thing. You can switch it around, move it around, see how it's going to look. Front, click on front for front, click on back for back. You know, the inside is blank. Okay, we're happy. We're not going to change our paper. We go next. Envelopes, they give you free envelopes. You can have stuff printed on them, but if you're gonna sell them to people, you don't want anything printed on them. So I just always choose the free envelopes. Well, I don't know why that checkbox isn't checking, but we're going to click select and see if that works. There we go. Okay, this is where they try to sell you other stuff. They're going to try to sell you your image on flat cards, uh, pillows, mugs, blah, blah. Just say, well, move, go to cart. And that's it. So 
here's in my cart. I did this yesterday, so it's in here twice. Um, for 10 cards, it would be 1278. For 30 cards, it would be 4066. Um, this is a promotional code. I use Honey, which gives me discounts. That's why that's popping up. You can um, get your best price. And then you just go to check out. And pretty soon, you'll have your cards delivered to your door. So that was pretty uh, quick. Um, I hope that, that helps. Pardon me? That helps a lot. I, Good. I hear let me chat. I'm going to go back to. Okay, any questions about that? It's pretty simple, you know, you have to spend some time learning how the websites work. Finerworks is also pretty user friendly. Um, and it's really nice. The, the thing that's really nice is you can save all of this stuff in the, you know, in your account and go back and reorder very easily. I mean, when you first design something, it takes a little time. But um, once you've done that, you can go back and just reorder. Now, finer works, you have to be careful with them because if, if you don't reorder something within a year, they take that out of your portfolio. So um, that has become, you know, that, that was a real frustration for me the first time it happened. I didn't know they were going to do that. And I probably had, oh, I don't know, 50 images in my in my account on finer works and I went in there to order prints. It had been a while since I'd ordered prints and when I went back to order prints and cards, all my images were no longer there. They were able to work with me and get them back so I didn't have to upload them all again. But um, uh, like I said, they're very user friendly. The chat is really user friendly. They're usually right there in um, great support. So hope that helped. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lorraine. We appreciate that. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, we've got Lorraine on here. This this has been recorded, so it will be uh, uploaded to our YouTube video probably tonight or tomorrow. Um, there was some handouts in the in the chat. If you didn't get a chance to download those, we will put those on uh, the Best Misery Hands Members Only page uh, tonight. So everybody will have access to, to the handouts and the, the recording and stuff. So hopefully it thank was you. helpful and informative and, you know. And thank feel you. free thank to you for email me us. if you have any other questions. And it's LorraineMcFarlandArt at gmail.com and um, I'll be happy to help you out. Bye. Thank you, Lorraine. We appreciate it. Thank that. you, guys. Thank have, you. Have a good day. Thank you. Everybody.